Well, hello and welcome to Business 360. I'm Ashmit Kumar, and here are the headlines that we're tracking this evening. Stock market stumble for the first time in 2023. Sensex loses over 600 points. Nifty declines by a percent. Metals and reality stocks lead the fall. Many, many challenges right now uh, around the world. In fact, India is probably the exception. India is the exception in a challenging global environment, says Satya Nadella, even as he remains cautious in the short term, expects pockets of growth to emerge even if economies go through a recession and remains bullish on the long term. That's an exclusive. Nadella expects the next two years to be challenging for tech companies after the pandemic fueled growth, admits that Microsoft is not immune and that says that tech sector must look inwards to boost efficiency to remain competitive. The union cabinet approves an initial outlay of close to 20,000 crore rupees in its green hydrogen mission, targets investments worth 8 lakh crore rupees and hydrogen production capacity of 5 million metric tons by 2030. The mission aims to give incentives worth 17,000 crore rupees for electrolyzer and green hydrogen manufacturing. Setback for Google, the company appellate tribunal refuses to say the 1,337 crore rupee penalty imposed by CCI on the tech giant. Says economics can't be allowed to run astray, orders the company to pay 10% of the amount. Google hints at moving the Supreme Court to challenge the NCLAT order. 30 employee unions belonging to three Maharashtra government-owned bar discoms begin a 72-hour strike protest against parallel licenses to private players. There are reports of power supply disruptions in nine districts, including Nagpur, rural Pune and Varda. Sam Bankman fried the founder of bankrupt cryptocurrency exchange FTX, pleads not guilty to fraud charges. Two of his colleagues have already pleaded guilty and are cooperating with investigators. Higher household expenditures, lesser spend on health and more savings. That's the sentiments among consumers as we enter 2023, according to the Axis My India's Consumer Sentiment Index for January. Well, let's begin with the day's market action. Now, the Lal Street saw an all-round fall today and failed to hold on to this week's early gains. Nifty and Sensex fell over a percent each with metals and realty leading that slide. Both indices uh, saw a fall of about 2%. Banks and mid-caps also fell in line with the benchmarks. However, pharma counters showed some resilience. Nigel D'Souza is joining us now with a quick wrap of the day's market action. Nigel. Well, global markets itself were jittery overnight on the back of recession fears, and that's what weighed on global stock markets. For the Indian markets, participation was back which wasn't the best thing because we did see quite a bit of selling pressure all through the trading session. The bigger problem was that the broader markets that outperformed for the last two sessions, well, it underperformed in today's trading session with way more number of stocks declining in comparison to the number of stocks that were advancing. Metal stocks, well, they've given away most of those uh, gains that we saw. Remember, pricing did see a bit of a bounce in the last few sessions. However, the recessionary fears are back and the problem is, will China slow down yet again? And that's why ferrous and non-ferrous stocks, they did come in for selling. Coal India, there was an additional new sprint that did come out. And that was that the wage hike has been approved to the tune of around 19%. The street believes that in the near term, things could be under some pressure because the pass-through may not be possible in a pre-election year. Tech stocks, well, they did see some pressure all through the trading session. And they're not out of the woods as yet. Infosys and Wipro, both of them did end in the red. The problem, though, is that the heavyweight stocks. Reliance Industries and the HDF, HDFC twins, well, they ended with cuts of more than a percent, and that's what put pressure and contributed to a bulk of the 200-point downtake that we saw on the Nifty itself. The Nifty Bank, that's been the saving grace. The problem is today, it broke the 20 DMA and ended below those levels. So you had Innocent Bank that was lower, RBL Bank, as well as Scandra Bank, all of them did end with cuts of around a percent to around 3%. Or remember, they've had a big run, but they did come in for some selling today. And Indescent Bank, they came up with the quarterly numbers, which didn't look that bad, but the, that stock did see a bit of a knock in, in today's session. Well, a couple of other quarterly updates as well did come about. Vedanta and Avenue Supermarkets, but both those two stocks as well did end with cuts. All in all, it was a down day for the markets. The Nifty ended at the low point of the day. 
interesting to see whether or not we go and test the December 2022 lows, or in fact, we do see a bit of a bounce from these levels. Right, Nigel, thanks a lot for that quick wrap. Now, on the macro front, meanwhile, India's services sector activity saw a sharp pickup in December with the S&P Purchasing Managers Index rising to 58.5 versus 56.4 in November. The number has remained above the 50 mark for 17 months in a row. With this, the composite PMI, which is a combination of manufacturing and services, has risen to nearly 59.4 versus 56 in November. Well, a steady fall in iPhone maker Apple's stock prices saw the company's market value drop below $2 trillion, making it the latest casualty in the tech stock route. Apple fell nearly 4% yesterday to close at its lowest level since June of 2021. Not a single company now has a market value of over $2 trillion. In fact, Apple and Amazon have each lost over $800 million in market cap in 2022. In fact, the market value uh, that each of these companies have lost was more than double the Meta's entire market cap. Well, as tech stocks continue to tumble, Microsoft Satya Nadella says that the next two years will be challenging after the pandemic-fueled growth. Speaking exclusively to CNBC TV18, Shireen Ban, Nadella said that he remains cautious in the short term, but bullish in the long term. The Microsoft CEO expects pockets of growth to emerge, even if economies go through a recession. Nadella called India an exception amidst a challenging global environment. Inflation, recession fears across most parts of the world at this point in time. Uh, interest rates continue to move higher. Uh, is it all flashing red on your dashboard? Is there any sign of green at all? I mean, it's clearly many, many challenges right now uh, around the world. In fact, India is probably the exception. Uh, there are parts India, Middle East, Latin America, uh, some of the other parts of Asia are the things that are green. And I think uh, Europe and the United States uh, are going to be challenged. I mean, United States, not yet, but I think 23 will be much harder. Uh, so, yes, we want to be very, very cautious in our outlook in the e immediate term. Long term, I'm very bullish of uh, us coming out, right? Because there are two cycles, I think, Shireen, that are happening. One is a supply cycle that's a very long cycle. Uh, that's a secular shift. It's not, we're not going back to 2010, 2011, uh, because, the re, because of the geopolitics, as well as essentially the rejiggering of supply chains. Uh, I think we're going to have a supply cycle that's going to persist. The demand cycle is going to be a classic demand cycle. There will be some economies that will go through a recession. Some may be deep, some may be minor. Uh, and then inside of that, there will be pockets of growth like mm. India. And so I think for us as a global company, we're not going to be immune from what's happening in the macro. We will have to also get our uh, own sort of fo operational focus on making sure our expenses are in line with our revenue growth, manage the short term, but make sure we're investing for the long term. Many CEOs are now talking about having to respond to the new economic reality. What is that going to mean, not just for Microsoft, but for the tech sector in general? Are we likely to see more pain, especially when it comes to retrenching, downsizing, uh, you know, margins going to be under pressure, guidance going to be a downside risk to that as well? I think overall, quite frankly, whether it's for us as Microsoft or the tech sector, it's going to be very, very important to look inside and say, are we as efficient uh, as we need to be to be competitive. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, just because we are a technology company doesn't mean that we are the most efficient at what we do. And so as the paradigm has changed, as the bar has risen, we have to measure ourselves with the new bar. So definitely when, and also the growth picture mm. has changed, we have to have operating expenses that need to be aligned. So definitely we are going to look at all of that, and it means that we're not sort of immune, as I said, uh, to the global uh, changes. But the one interesting thing to your point, though, is tech industry employment is not tech employment. Yeah. That, I think, is the key divergence that needs to be well understood, because that, I think, is positive, by the way, for the tech industry mm. long term. Because if you look at it, uh, overall, tech jobs has actually increased. The tech jobs now are sh coming in financial services, in energy companies, mm. in retail, every s uh, manufacturing, and that's healthy because in the long run, all those employees in all those industries are going to consume more tech infrastructure, mm. right? When we think about our cloud business, long term we're bullish because of the fact that there's more employment outside of the tech industry 
uh, of technical talent. And so that's, I think, what we are banking on. No, I, I think you underscore the labor market resilience aspect. But, you know, what we've seen, especially as far as the stock markets are concerned, and I know that CEOs often say that don't, don't focus on what the markets are telling you, but they seem to be suggesting that there is significant pain in store for the tech sector. How do you read what's happening with the way that the markets have corrected, specifically the tech stocks, and what that signals? You know, for me, look, I, I, I'm never the one who would ever say uh, ignore the market because the markets are smarter than us all. Uh, and and uh, all the, I think they are reflecting on is, look, where is the growth coming from? Uh, and how should we think about normalizing for that growth? And so I think stock performance, economic performance are not exactly the same. Uh, but the key for us as a tech industry, I, I always go back as a percentage of GDP. Mm. The simple question to ask is, do we think tech spend will increase or decrease? If we believe software and digital infrastructure is going to be important in construction, in energy, in manufacturing, long term, then you have to be long on tech industry. But will we have to go through our own cycles around productivity? Mm. Absolutely, like anybody else. Uh, but that's at least my perspective. I, I wouldn't look, I mean, I, I, the only reason why I would say ignore the short term is because in the long run, we would be fine with demand, but in the short run, what we have to focus on is our own productivity and making sure we are at the efficient How frontier. would you quantify short term and long run? I would say the next two years are probably going to be the most challenging, uh, because after all, we did have you know, a lot of acceleration uh, during the pandemic, and there is some amount of normalization of that demand. Uh, and on top of it, there is a real recession in par large parts of the world. And so the combination of pull forward and recession means we will have to adjust. Uh, and that will cycle through the demand cycle and, in fact, come out of it with what can be another massive uh, growth cycle for the tech industry. Well, you can catch that entire conversation with Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella tomorrow right here on CNBC TV 18. Well, meanwhile, the union cabinet today approved the government's national green hydrogen mission with an initial outlay of 19,700 crore rupees. The mission aims to make India a global hub for production, utilization and export of green hydrogen and its derivatives. Parikshit Luthra is joining us now with more on the mission and its goals and expected outcomes. Parikshit. Out of the total outlay of 19,744 crores, approximately 17,000 crores will go towards uh, incentives for green hydrogen generation in the country and electrolyzer manufacturing. There will be schemes which will be launched by the government on the lines of PLI to uh, roll out these incentives. Uh, there will be stakeholder consultations over the next few months before operationalizing these schemes, but uh, approximately incentives to the tune of 4,500 crores will be rolled out for electrolyzer manufacturing and 13,000 crore for green hydrogen generation in the country. The government plans to achieve 5 MMT of green hydrogen production capacity till 2030 and 60 to 100 gigawatt of electrolyzer capacity as well. There will also be investments made by the government through this mission plan into R&D, into infrastructure and transport development uh, to boost the green hydrogen sector in the country. This mission ke kriyanman se भारत को ग्रीन हाइड्रो हाइड्रोजन के उत्पादन उपयोग और निर्यात के लिए एक ग्लोबल हब के रूप में स्थापित किया जाए इस दृष्टि से काम किया जा रहा है अब 2020 तक ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन की कुल डिमांड ग्लोबल की जो होगी हमारा प्रयास है कि हम उसका कम से कम 10 परसेंट भारत के लिए लाएं well, a quick look at the other headlines. It's a setback for Google. The company appellate tribunal refused to stay the 1,337 crore penalty imposed by CCI on the tech giant. The tribunal, while observing that economics can't be allowed to run astray, ordered the company to pay a 10% of that penalty amount. Google, meanwhile, has hinted at moving the Supreme Court to challenge the NCLAT order. National Asset Reconstruction Company has emerged as the highest bidder for the Shrey Twins ahead of Autumn. Sources tell us that NARCL has offered over 5,500 crore rupees in terms of net present value. This includes an upfront cash payment of around 3,180 crore rupees. Delhi Metro Rail Corp uh, tells the Delhi High Court that Delhi government has refused to pay 3,500 crore rupees for the arbitral award to Reliance Infra while the center has said that it is considering but has not committed to a payout yet. The DMRC says it will try to raise necessary funds from open market 
and loan from the centre. Meanwhile, the Central Electricity Regulator Commission has ruled in favour of Tata Power for sharing mining profits from Mundra Power Purchase Agreement. This after the company was supplying power to Mundra PPA under emergency measures from May to December of last year. The regulator has ordered Tata Power to share 30% of mining profits and will also share profits via sale at power exchanges. Thousands of employees of three state-owned power distribution companies began a 72-hour strike in various parts of Maharashtra today. Employees in areas like Nashik, uh, Nagpur, Aurangabad are protesting against Adani Electricity seeking license to supply power in areas it currently doesn't operate in. Employees claim that privatization in areas where state electricity distributors are successfully operating will dent the financial health of government-owned discoms. The meanwhile, Deputy Chief Minister Devendra Fatavis has convened a meeting with various employee organizations to look into their demands. Network 18's Uday Timande gets us a ground report from Nagpur. Bijli Vibhag ke Niji Karan ke khilaap Maharashtra ke Bijli Vibhag ke karmachariyon ne raat 12 baje se kaam band andolan kiya hai. 12 ghante chalne wale is kaam band andolan ki wajah se kai jagah bijli nirman na hone se bijli vitaran mein samasya hui. जिस वजह से किसान सामान्य नागरिक और उद्योग क्षेत्र को बिजली आपूर्ति नहीं हो पाई बहत्तर घंटे के इस आंदोलन में कई राजनीतिक पार्टियां भी कूद पड़ी है कर्मचारियों को अपना समर्थन दे इस आंदोलन को राजकीय रंग देने की कोशिश भी की गई अगर सरकार इनकी मांगों से गंभीरतापूर्वक ना ले तो आगामी अठारह जनवरी से पूर्ण काम बंद आंदोलन करने की घोषणा भी इन आंदोलनकारियों ने दी है अब देखना यह होगा कि सरकार इस निजीकरण के खिलाफ और कर्मचारियों के हित में क्या निर्णय लेती है वीडियो जर्नलिस्ट प्रशांत मोहिते के साथ उदय तिमांडे सी एन बी सी नेटवर्क एटीन नागपुर विल विद इट्स टाइम नाउ स्लिप इन टू अ वेरी शॉर्ट ब्रेक बट कमिंग अप ऑन द अदर साइड हायर हाउस होल्ड एक्सपेंडिचर लेस स्पेंड ऑन हेल्थ एंड मोर सेविंग दैट्स अमंग कंज्यूमर्स एज वी एंटर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री एक्सक्लूसिव डिटेल्स ऑफ द एक्सिस माई इंडिया कंज्यूमर सेंटिमेंट इंडेक्स फॉर जनवरी इज अपनेक्स्ट